Okay, my bad. I got I got oozed by the man who's not even in this time zone, so he's more important. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. Um, so yeah, I was talking about the medication regimen, I believe, and all the pain and stuff. So yeah, um, I think it talks about cytomel and calcium and vitamin D and all that stuff. But your doctors will tell you about that because it's all about what um what your particular needs are. So, yeah. I'm just, like, kind of, like, refreshing you on, on what's up. Um, as far as pain goes, it talks about the incision. Um, like, that'll be fine. It, uh, I had my, my stitches in for, I have, like, over, like, a hundred, though, so. Uh, um, I have my stitches in for, like, a couple, like, two days, three days, and then my doctor cut them off. And you'll also have these little tubey things. I remember in one of my videos I talked about like the two like lines right here. Those are like for like the, the drainage tube. And you'll get those off in a couple of days. You just want to take all the fluid out of the surgical site. They just want to drain all of it out. And so it kind of hurt. So my doctor put like a towel on like right here. And then he's just like, oh. And, uh, it, it was painful. It was indeed painful. But I guess it's like pulling a needle out of a broken bone. But I have had no experience that. But, um, yeah, um, other type of pain, um, I guess they have you, like, sprawled out in some funky position while on the operating table, and so the back of your neck and the back of your shoulders, and just, like, your neck and shoulders just all over, and you're going to be, like, insanely sore. I was sore for, like, the longest time. I couldn't, <laughs> that was, like, the most awful part. Like, I would try to sit up and eat, but I had to be, like, crouched down the whole time. One, because I was sore, and two, because the skin right here, when it's sewn back together, it's it's very tight, so you can't just like you know stretch the thing around. It took me like a month, two months before I could even like turn my neck a little bit. But that's because my incision is really large. So obviously, like if it's here, then it's gonna be if like it's like this large, then it's gonna be a lot shorter. But yeah. So if you really can't turn your neck, I would not suggest driving, because that 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 would be dangerous. <laughs> um. Da -da 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 -da. What else can I talk about? Um, soreness. Uh, the first day or two, since you're going to be really swollen, you're going to be on like a jello diet, just like drinking a lot of stuff. Um, that's pretty much how it goes, and your doctor will tell you like everything you need to know from there. Um, now proceeding to surgery. Uh, if if your incision was like large, kind of like mine. Um, my doctor cut and he lifted up my skin and therefore like all the nerve endings and stuff were really damaged um, in the process of doing that and so <clears throat> uh, I can't feel anything from my jawline down um, and my doctor said that the numbness would be there for like six months now my surgery was in April uh, April 15th of 09 so and I still can't really feel like I can feel um, pressure like if you were to like poke I can feel that, but if you were to go like this, I couldn't feel it. So, um, I can feel a little bit. Right now, if you, like, stroke my neck, then it's, um, it's kind of tingly, but if you put pressure on it, it's really uncomfortable. So, I guess all things come with time. So, that's all right. Um, other than that, it'll, it'll probably be, like, a little bit numb just from, like, opening the skin, but then it should all go away soon. My scar's kind of lumpy and kind of red, so, you know, get, like, you know, rub some Ederma on it if you're really that, um, conscious about a scar. I personally really like it. I think it looks cool. But then I get a lot of really weird questions. Like, some people, um, ask me if I got kidnapped. Others ask me if, like, or, if people thought it was, like, a necklace. And, yeah. Well, I got asked if I was kidnapped when I first started college. It was funny. <laughs> but, yeah. Whatever. Okay. So now, 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 in the, in the long run, after your surgery, you will have this radioactive iodine treatment. Now this is very, very, very important. I will tell you how it went down for me. It should be very similar for you. And I'll tell you about, I'll tell you how to go about things if you have kids and whatnot. Okay, so first of all, radioactive iodine is meant to only target your thyroid tissue. Because, you know, radioactive um, waves, like particles or whatever, are gonna, it's gonna kill cells, right? And your thyroid is the only thing 
in your body, the thyroid tissue is the only tissue in your body that will absorb iodine. So they make it radioactive so that any thyroid tissue left from like anything, any little bits and pieces that didn't get taken in, out in the surgery are going to be killed by radioactive iodine. Like that's like that's what they're hoping for. Now that didn't happen for me, so I've had to get it um, like two two times. I've had it like I, I've had the treatment twice because I it there was still thyroid tissue present when I went in for my checkup. What happens is when you get the RAI, um, it's quick and painless, not a big deal. Well, not it's not quick actually. You get a little pill and you take it, and you basically need to quarantine yourself for like four or five four days to be quarantined, and like the next two or three days you need, you need to take really strict precautions when you're interacting with other people. So this is um, this is why it's important, especially when you have children, to get them out of your house. Um, it's like you're going to want to be drinking a lot of water, taking two showers a day, um, pee. If you want to drink a lot of water, so you can pee a lot. So you can try, you need to pee as much of the radioactive stuff out of your body as you can because you really don't want, like you don't want it in your system. You just want it to attack the thyroid tissue and be done with it. Um, and since it's going to be coming out of like your urine and your tears and your saliva and your, your pores even, that's why you can't interact with people. Like people need to stay at least 10 to 15 feet away from you. At least that's what I was told because I got a, a really high dosage. So the first time I got a really high dosage and the second time I got like half of it. I had like, yeah, I got like half of it the second time because there wasn't much tissue left. But um, yeah, um, you need, you, need, you need to make sure you have your own bedroom and your own bathroom. So obviously your own bathroom and make sure no one touches your stuff. If you live on the second floor of your house, like um, like my, like me, my mom had to bring food up to me. Um, you need to make sure that <clears throat> you use all like plastic utensils, paper plates, all that stuff, and collect it in a bag, and then like uh, just keep it there, and then like hang it in your backyard or something, and then throw it out after three months, because you need the radioactive stuff to decay all. You need, you need to decay before you can throw it out. So it doesn't like make everything else radioactive. Because if one little thing spreads, like if you vomit on the street, it's gonna spread like wildfire. It's really, really dangerous. So, um, being quarantined is not to protect you from other people. It's to protect others from you, and you need to realize that. So, yeah. Um. Also, wash your clothes separately from everyone else. Like everything, just keep everything separate. So nothing. There's no like cross contamination going on. Um, but yeah, your doctor will tell you, like, what you need to do for your case. It all, it all depends on the person. That's what happened to me. Now, every, like, six months or so, you'll go in for, like, a one-week-long, like, treatment, um, not treatment, like, a checkup, where it'll take it over a period of, like, a business week for five days. The first day, you'll get a thyrogen shot in your butt. The second day, another thyrogen shot. The third day is a day off. The fourth day is, um, you take a little, a really, really tiny dosage of radioactive iodine just to see if there's any uptake of, of that iodine in your thyroid. And then on the, the last day, to be a Friday, you'll get a body scan. And then you'll get the results and evaluate those and see if you need more treatment. It's like to see if there's more tissue present. So that was the case with me. I had more thyroid tissue. So like I had some still there. Some was kind of growing a little bit. So I had the second round this summer. So I had it both summers. Um, and then I had another body scan and there's still a little bit of tissue there, and it's kind of, it's kind of like growing or whatever. It, it has a mind of its own, but whatever. Um, that can be fixed. So any of you have, are asking like how I'm doing, you no, know, it's fine. I'm at UC Irvine, so I'm like like an hour, hour and a half away from home. So I can go away to college, and I'm doing, I'm doing good. Um, nothing really bad has like gone on. Just I have to make sure that I stay on my meds and I eat a lot of the right foods to keep my metabolism going. I read that if you take a little bit of lemon juice and some water, it like kickstarts your metabolism. So that's really good. But um yeah. Um that's pretty much it. I think you're gonna have your own medication regimen. I'm like taking Synthroid and stuff, but your doctor will adjust the dosage that is like suitable for your needs and stuff. But yeah. So um I'm gonna post the and if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask, okay? I'll talk to you guys later.